Is there anything you didn't custom? <laughs> you might as well. If you're gonna do it. If you're going, if you're going this far, you might as well. Guys, welcome to another episode of the Drift Games vlog. We're giving them to you fast and every day right now as we try and hit our 100,000 subscriber target. Today's video, if you've clicked this, you're one of the lucky ones because your head is about to explode off your body and there are so many cars we're gonna get through in this little, little video that I'm gonna have to be super fast at the start. Our friend Sultan has a brand new workshop, it's in there. Josh and I have not seen any of it yet. His cars are there, it's all painted up. We don't know what we're gonna expect. However, he's next door to Black Boost Tuning and they have some bananas cars. So I'm gonna do a quick run through of some of the special things they have outside. So outside there is a box. An SLS twin turbo kit. How big was the kit to come in a box this size? A Mercedes SLS twin turbo kit. And I actually will show you the car in a moment that that's from. Okay, we've got a C63 AMG, 700 horsepower, S-Class AMG, CLS. There's a lot of AMG. GMC Sierra, Ford Raptor. This is a V12 by turbo. So what that means is it's the engine from the Pagani. But we've got two of them. These are one of 100 in the world and there's two right here. So these are 7,800 horsepower of the Pagani Huayra engine in a G-Class, like V12. Great. Oh, nearly fell for us. Ferrari piece set, check a look at the front of this. So this car is spec. It's locked. Uh, it's, for good reason. For good reason. It's specced with the Italian flag, so it has a red brake caliper here, a white brake caliper here. I was wondering why. So red, white, and green for the Italian flag. I thought, I thought someone just did one caliper. This is like a fully tuned titanium exhaust, crazy 458, as you can see with full carbon kit on it. Another AMG. You saw that SLS turbo kit? Well, that came out of this car. It originally was twin turbo. You've now gone back to stock. Look at this thing. Like, this is wide body SLS. An SLS is rare enough, but a wide body SLS? And by the way, guys, this is just the warm up of this video. CLS 63 AMG. Another CLS AMG. This what car. What do we have here? Josh, this is, this is fully tuned. You guys can see Black Goose Performance Engineering behind it. So this is an E-Class. Do you want to know how much power this E-Class has? 700 horsepower. 900 at the wheels, okay, which it. is about 980 horsepower. That's nearly a thousand horsepower in a car that looks like it would go to the shops. I sound angry. Tunes. Here's a tone. That is a tone. <laughs> a grumbly tone. Thank you so much. My head is exploding. I think this is the moment. We've, I think we've waited long enough. I think Sultan has cleaned up the. Play. I don't. I'm not sure. I actually needed cleaning that much. Get a coffee. Nice coffee. And now we're gonna go in. I'm excited. Are you excited? I'm, I I know we're gonna be wild. I'm not sure how we do this. Do we just do do we just walk in? Wait, wait, no, no, just, just, just have a look, just have a look outside, but they're outside first. Oh, hello. Yeah, we definitely almost just walk past this then. I mean I've seen these outside many a workshop in Ireland. They're uh, so this is a sand rail, and this is something they use here. Hold on a minute. This is a V8 twin turbo, isn't it? It is. No, that's oh, what, that's what gives that away, Dave? It might be the two turbos. <laughs> this could be the most aggressive exhaust ever from both the turbos yeah. linked up. So these are sand rails, and they're basically used for going as fast as you can through the desert. What makes them so can crazy? I say, Dave? I'm not sure this is for sand. This is a road tire, so I don't know what. Maybe this is just for cruising around the industrial estates. <laughs> Look at the length of the shock on this thing. It's the size of my arm. It is. It's actually bigger than your arms, very puny arms to be fair. Oh, okay. um, the engine's sitting so far back, so these do wheelies, which is a scary experience. Four seats, bananas. So this is a taster of what we're going to see inside, but uh, this is a good starting point, I think so. Wow. So this is... This is, this is fancy now. This is fancy. You're flexing now. This is giving us big inspiration now for what we may or may not have planned. This, no, this is a, yeah. Away. But this is what we were thinking, like, 
stacking the containers up so you have it just looks so cool and industrial right and then the lights when the lights are on it's actually pretty cool and watch josh go in there first if you go in there you look like a fish in an aquarium you can keep a pet and you can tap on the window and be like <laughs> look at him no he's at the zoo yeah he's at the zoo and you can put food into the hatch no I'm, I'm definitely not not up for that we'll see by the end of the video so let's where do we start so this is the new so we're still deciding how to divide them and this is supposed to be like uh, ps tv you know cool stuff in here like a hangout area yeah because we all, we all have acs and then i just left one open and just because you know how it is in workshops the car's on the jack the boys are chilling and Ah, do this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I decided to leave this open. I still don't know how I'll divide it. So it's literally, I literally just like it's finished like just like, before the weekend. Just got it. This is not bad going for a start. Yeah. Let's be honest. It's you okay. got your logo in. Yes, finally. I left this open for storage, so forklift or whatever, and then there's a storage unit and there's another office there. Still don't know what I'm gonna do. Uh, and yeah, that's why I didn't get. To, uh, the cars that I wanted. You You're gonna, can you bleep? Because oh, we can bleep. We so can bleep. I, we have to take our I want to put the Aston and the uh, here. And so, what you've bleeped there, I know it is bleeped, and we will get to that in the future. <laughs> but uh, believe me, if you, uh, if you need any hints of where we're going, he, he's gone even above this. Anyway, we'll move on. To, so, what I love about this is it's so clean. Everything's so neat and clean, and it really shows off the cars. Because your old workshop, there was so many cars being built. Yeah. There was cars kind of everywhere, but this is a little bit more of a showcase, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going to leave the one we really want to look at till the end. But let's remind everybody who, who you are and what you've built. And there's quite an extensive list of stuff. This is the car that I think, this was the internet breaker. Yeah, this yeah. one was. This is the crushed carbon or forged carbon. Yeah, yeah. Um, Aston Martin, of course. And this was the inspiration for many a Forza livery I've seen in the past. And this is like, I think the only one in the world, right? The only Aston in the world? Yeah. Drift car? Yes. But it's okay. a real drift car. It's not like, yeah, yeah, you know, a lot of people say, oh, is it just... So much damage right now, but uh, I mean... What I love about this is the door handles are still yeah. the Aston ones, yeah. which are so yeah, cool. Still the open butterfly or whatever they're called. So give us a quick two minute rundown of the spec on this thing for people who haven't seen it before. Uh, it's the same. I didn't touch it since before COVID when you were here. Same engine, LS8 twin turbo, because the bigger engine, we couldn't go to Europe because it was too loud. We just took, a, took off the supercharger, put two twins on it, and it's running Motec PDM, Motec Dash, uh, some sort of sequential. One thing that he's not going to flex on here, but I am, is the, the dashboard. <laughs> it's all suede with the gold emblems from the Lunatic oh, Twin Nature there. What? That's what it's about. It's about the details. It's, it, we love the details, because we built our cars. The details are the things that Generally, people don't see, but you know is there. That's a nice little touch. Hang on a second. There's one more thing. So this cage, you couldn't weld it to the actual chassis because it's an aluminium chassis. So you can see here, like, what are the specs of this cage from? Is it from the race car? Yes, yeah, from the GT3. It's from actually the GT3 spec race, like the, the track cars. Yep. And we just spec'd it off of it. And every single bend, like, it has to be X millimeters from the floor, and the next one the same, and they, they, every single one has to be to the spec. So we got that one. We were lucky. It's beautiful. I love the gold handbrake as well. It's just it's all the theme throughout. Yeah. And then what have you have you got a carbon Samsonis? Yeah. Yeah. Shifter. <laughs> oh, of course you do. <laughs> as you do. As you do. <laughs> so we can pop it from here. Yeah, yeah. So it's this one with this one. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of damage since when I hit Danny. It's a drift car. Yeah. That's the thing. People think this is just some crazy build that sits in here. Yeah. This thing, I've seen it smash into people. I've seen people smash into it. Yes. I've cried a little bit inside every time it's happened, but it's yeah. a beautiful build. This thing is still as, as crazy. Probably not to you anymore because you've seen it so much, but to me, it's still as crazy as the day I saw it for the first time. I think it's crazy how far the engine, that's a V8, yeah. and it stops. It's mid-engine. It's, yeah, it's, it's like factory mid-engine, mid 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 and that's why it's, it's so balanced. Even with all the setup, it's still 50 50. It's like it looks really smooth on the track. I have to say, it's wonderful. But I'm upgrading it big time soon. Once the two bleeped cars are finished, I'm gonna go back yeah, to well, it. I mean, honestly, I thought it needed a little upgrade myself. I didn't want to say it now, it's looking <laughs> a little bit, you know. But yeah, it's I, cool. And then we come to well, this is a strange car because it's, it was fully carbon. I remember way back when this was shipped to Mondello, yeah. 
and someone dropped it off to me and I, they were like, oh, this is for you. And I was like, it just arrived from the Rallycross guys brought it. Yeah. And I was like, it's all carbon. I'd never seen an all carbon S15 before. But after you've done the all carbon, you started getting into more like the JDM style. Yeah. And then it's now it looks like a, a, D1, well, a D1 car that's really, really fancy. But beautiful color, it's the Lexus color, right? It's the Lexus uh, paint code. And um, I, so it's actually completely rebuilt even so it was powder coated when it was there. I sandblasted it and I bought new, I bought a new engine, new dog box, new quick change, new motor. It was just brand new. Everything, every panel. This is, I think, because so, you're humble. This is like a perfect S15. I know a lot of people would say the SR20 makes it perfect, but let's be honest. <laughs> so this is a V8, but everything from the running gear to the paint to the fitment to the wheels, everything I think is just on point on this thing. We have to pop it over now because yes, this. Yes, yes. This is the bit that's not so genuine. Yeah. I find it funny that this car was by no means a bad car before and you completely stripped it back, powder coated it and everything and yeah. It's a beast. So obviously after the last round, I don't I think it, the gasket's gone or something because there's some uh, latte happening with us. <laughs> <laughs> Oil and water mix, yes exactly. Still running Darren's arms, uh, the DMAC arms. Um, I took off the Willwood because remember I kept on crashing and in Watergrass Hill, yeah. every time I didn't shoot, I didn't know you had to warm them up. Just, you do? Yeah, apparently. I learned that on my Mustang the first time I nearly went through a hedge yes. in, in Mandelo <laughs> Park, yeah? So now I just put Akibonos and they're pretty good, they're really good. And this car is like a super nice sounding, well balanced, responsive car. You guys will see some clips here of it in action in Yas Marina. And what power is it running at the moment? Uh, uh, on the wheel, it was uh, just shy of six. six. Just 580, 590. Yeah, so like six, nearly 700 crank. Seven, yeah. yeah. So that's plenty. Yeah, it should be good. Plenty. Now yeah, we're going to skip this because I want to get a little bit more of an in-depth review of this car. Cool. But we'll tease it. And we'll go to the Corolla. Yeah. Do you I have two of these Corollas? Yes. Actually three. The one you shot. And I haven't seen yet. You have my old one. Yeah, the one, yeah. Yeah, so I, I have an old SR20 Corolla. Well, it's not an SR anymore, because Sultan happened. So I had an SR20 competition car, sold it, Sultan has it, and he decides, what'll I do with it? I'll change it from to left-hand drive, I'll change the entire running gear, I'll change it. So none of my, the shell is the same, everything else. He even changed and the that's, page. And that's in Ireland at the moment, yes. in Group D. So that's a very impressive car, which I'm sure we'll see down the line. But this is the other end of the scale. Yeah. Super original. But you haven't seen, I have actually changed the engine in this one. Oh yeah? Yeah, I put a nice beams ah, in. Ah, what a swap. Yeah, it sounds really She's nice. She's got the Alteza engine. Yes, sir. It gives it a little bit more torque. And I mean, let's be honest, the 1.6 is a little bit. Yeah. But the one, remember the old one, it was in there, it was dual carb, yeah. towed the heads, cams. It was fully built. I just liked the engine. I put it on the side and I put this one in. Because I bought another one. Remember, you saw the yes. second one. So you two red right, yeah. Corollas and the other one's getting the, the built engine. This is nice though, this, this is a really nice conversion for this. And it sounds so nice and you know, it drives really cool and it's just here. It's on the Eclipse. Yep. These are the same wheels I picked for my Corolla actually. They're the nicest looking Corolla wheel, the anniversary. Beautiful, beautiful car. And this I think thing it's is, the inside where it becomes oh, this is fairly beautiful. impressive. Like, I love this, the kind of old school stitching. Look at the center console, all, all carbon. carbon. And then even the door pockets, carbon. Now, that's a flex. The, the door pocket in carbon now is a little bit of a flex. <laughs> I've never seen that before. That's uh, crazy. Carbon signal, the same guys who did the uh, Sanka, the, the Sanka, whatever, the Fuguzi and Sima, yeah. they did this, the interior of this car. Cool. Yep. <laughs> Not in Ireland do we see this. Now, this is something I haven't seen before. What, what were you going to do this before, which, before we came? No, this, the reason. <laughs> so, this is a radical. It's supposed to be over on top of the container. Of course, yeah. That's where I'd put it. <laughs> it can't fit this but, <laughs> but the Radicals, the, these are a fun car. They are, they are. We've seen a couple of these around Mandela and they're fast. But uh, it's not my thing. It's Matia. I tried, uh, drove it in my house, there was enough space. So I was all the way to sixth gear, then I realized it doesn't, like, you use downforce to turn, not the brakes. And I was like, shh, I was like, oh, sixth. I was like, oh, I'm trying to slow down. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was fun. Sketchy, but fun. <laughs> and this is going to be sort of a, sh a showpiece. Yes, yeah, on the on top over there. It's going to go all the way up. Yep. It's mm -hmm. very cool. It's nice. Okay, there's about 3,000 Irish men screaming at their television saying, will you just get to the IS200, please? We promised you we'd give you a full in-depth breakdown of the car. 
What? We'll put it on the jack if you want. We put it on the jack? Yeah, sure. Yeah, let's put it up on the ramp. take a quick second to thank one of our partners here at Drift Games, The Tire Box. They have an amazing website, they do next day delivery and they can save you money. They're exclusive retailers of Gold Line and Federal Tires, but they have a stock of absolutely everything. In fact, they have the highest amount of tires in the whole country of Ireland. So save yourself some money, save yourself some time and get some excellent customer service. Check out The Tire Box. Before we get the car on the ramp, I want to take a quick look around at the aesthetics of this car. So look, the IS200 or the Altezza or the IS300 or whatever you want to call it, it's very close to the hearts of Irish car culture because this is the car that a young person can afford to get into JDM rear wheel drive cars. However, you've taken that and gone to the moon with this thing. And I'm gonna put it out there that it's getting very close in my estimation, although you won't say it, to probably one of the best ones in the world. Let's do a little talk about around the car from the outside. So what you've got here is a very nice body kit from who? It's been a while. I think it's uh, BN Sport. It's a BN Sport, Sport, but the fenders and the quarter panels are from a guy from Russia. Because I, I saw it on Ken Gushi's car and I absolutely loved it. Do you know what? The only other one I was thinking of that might be contesting with it is Ken Gushi's car because it's, it's quite, it's same, it's quite similar on the body. So yeah. this is again the Lexus Metallic Red. And am I right saying there was mouldings on the door that's not there anymore? Uh, so basically, we put the mold, the wide body, on the door and then we made the full door and fiberglass. So the door is fiberglass, but obviously there's moldings here on the stock car, but they're gone. No, 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 there's not, it's just they're a whole piece. Smoothed. It's just one piece now. And then what normal people do is kind of bolt it on, but this is all molded in. Yeah, this is all molded in. Uh, it's a whole rear quarter panel. Oh, so you have it cut here? Yeah. Just yeah, in case it gets a little damage yeah, on the back. Yeah, yeah. So this is a fully functional drift This car. is just for drifting. Nice twin pipes on the back. Yeah. And then, uh, I like how it looks very road car-esque on the outside. So. I, I try, because I usually see cars with half bumpers and whatever, it doesn't yeah. really look good. No, but like from the rear, like obviously, that's not road yeah. car-esque, but like <laughs> with the panels on, it does. So this is a, obviously, fuel cell. I love the gusset work in there, it's just so, like, we try oh, wow. Oh, like, look, look, at this, look at the dimpling on the firewall. It's like the little touches that make it so much different. I did the fuel cell holder. Look at that. The fuel cell on the holder. Try, I try, I try. <laughs> You're doing pretty good. <laughs> so your fuse box and all that stuff is in a little couple of fuses for the fuel in the back and the fans in the back. Get the rear rad set up. Give us a little idea of the spec that's just back here. So uh, the, locally we can get these rads. They're from, you know how they do LS swap patrols. This is a GMC radiator because it's so wide, it doesn't fit in the patrols. You can buy this, they're shortened, and then I made custom the chambers for it, and then a flex light fans, and it's really good. The way right now, there's zero, like it never gets to even 90. Like it's really good. The crazy thing for me is just noticing this from looking at other ones. So I've seen 2J swaps, SR20 swaps. If you look at the exhaust, you know it's a V8, because it's coming down both sides of the car. So you've got one coming straight, and then you've got one coming all the way across over there, but it still looks Jap at the back. I try. You put two separate exhausts, but to try and get it into the BN bumper, you've had to do a lot yeah. more work, which is really cool. Yeah. And then the, this little half window as well. So I made the mold, I made the, we made it out of steel to see where we want the firewall, and then we made the mold and made it out, out of carbon. So this tiny piece of carbon all the way around. Yeah, it was just, a huge piece. There's so the much mold. waste there for yeah, this little to love. <laughs> so of the mold, you kept like 5%, Basically. but it makes the difference. It's really cool. Little half window to meet up with the firewall, firewall here. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. beautiful. The doors, I can't get over how light the doors are. Like they're, they must be like what, just over a kilo? Uh, we wanted to do carbon, but we're like, nah, let's leave a fiberglass because you're it's right, like they're super no light. In that at all. And we just made, we reinforced the doors to have something to hold the acrylic on it. And you won the award for biggest gussets in the world, didn't you? Yeah. They are the biggest gussets I've ever seen. They are like ridiculous. So tell, tell me about the, the windows, because we got a little sneak peek of this car before we came in. Um, so. Uh, the same thing, but just in case it gets too warm, you can just pull these over. Uh, you can take the whole thing off. I like oh, that. Wow. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. That's very cool. And then the same thing. Literally, it's very warm here, and you would need that. Some days, like, no, winter, no. Like, 
I mean, winter. when they say winter, it's our hottest day of the year. Win- winter. <laughs> it's winter like, now. Adam gets sunburnt in the winter here. Winter, winter attire. So let's have a look inside. Oh, and he's got the brids. We'll say bride because people will give out to us if we say bride, even though it should be bride. I feel the Japanese mispronounced it, and I think we have to go with that now, but still, I'll, be, I'll always be contentious on that. So do you guys say bride or bride, which is right, which is wrong? I know it should be bride. Anyway. How are they going to say that in a comment? That's a good point. <laughs> Don't say anything about it. Um, so this is like, this is an, so this is the matte carbon dash, which is probably like what I did, because if you put it actual carbon, you're yeah. just blind. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah. See it. I did forged carbon once. It was a disaster. Just sunglasses oh on. Oh my God. Because <laughs> all, all the events are at night, yeah. and it's 10 times worse. I can only imagine. Uh. <laughs> and so this has got a dog box? Yeah, dog box. Can I just say the dog box? You've customed the top layer to have your number on. So is the seat. And the, the, oh my God, the seat rails even. So does the battery box on is there anything you didn't custom? <laughs> you might as well, if you're gonna do it. If you're going, if you're going this far, you might as well. Yeah, exactly, right? You might as well. Yep, there it is. Yeah, the diamond uh, on the firewall wasn't my idea. It was done for another beep. For I like the, it. I quite it like was it. done for the <laughs> that hasn't liked the idea and he's like, oh, we've got oh, to beep that again then. Beep that again. Yeah. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah. You're Stay making this hard work for me, Sultan. <laughs> so some of the stuff under here is quite familiar to me. Not to most of the people who own IS 200s in Ireland now. This is, this is where it gets unfamiliar. Well, if not, the rest was unfamiliar. This is um, the same intake I have on the Corvette, which is really good. Yes. And he's got a powder coated to make it much fancier than mine, which I'm now th- contemplating. It's a nice idea. So this is a, an LS... Three stroke. Three stroke. So, it ha- so it's a 6.8. Uh, so the, the standard LS is 6.2. 6. 6.2. Yeah. And you've got a 6.8. Yeah. And, and then we part recorded like the intake. There's a guy called EFR in Abu Dhabi now, and he does his, like all the colors of the world you want, and all in powder coat. So, and he does like the exhaust. Like it's not want. a bad match. No, 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 it's actually really close. It's really close. I think it's the same. I actually took one of the, I think one of the body cut pieces, and I went there and I found, I was like, oh, let's just That's take this one. <laughs> perfect, it looks, because it looks like you've painted, like, I know this is powder coated. No, this is paint. This is paint. Yeah, this is powder coated. This is powder, it's very close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very close. No, they're good, they're really good. This is an amazing build. Yeah. And then you've got everything cut out of the front, obviously. Yeah, yeah. You've got the, uh, so not only does he take my idea of the two BMC air filters, but then he does this, which is way fancier. <laughs> Come on, Ryan Morton, we should have thought of this at the time. Although I don't have a logo. Maybe just my face. <laughs> just put Dave. Just Dave written there. But that's, it looks super cool, because through the grill, yeah. that's where it really that is. is just so cool. You can't see yours when the bonnet's closed, Dave. No, you cannot. <laughs> but he still has the annowing trying to get around this with the bonnet venting. That's just, why I the color. Like, yeah. if it was just another color, uh, it's just... you kind of don't notice. When it's drifting, you don't notice it. You don't actually see the intake. I noticed that when it was the lights were like, you kind of don't see it and you see a hump, but it's nicely blended in. Did the tints on the front lights? Yes. That is beautiful. But what we didn't get to do and what we didn't get to see yet is the underneath of this car. So what they're going to do is put it up on the ramp because I know you guys want to see the... I the suppose ramp? The, the guts. Ja- sorry. Oh, sorry, sorry. The ramp. The ramp. <laughs> we call it a jack. We call it a ramp. Tomato, tomato. Yes. We're going to throw it up. I want to see what's like, what it's like underneath. Sure, sure. So we got the car up on the ramp, as you can see from Adam O'Connor's bewildered face underneath. <laughs> <laughs> like this is, this is, this is mad. This is, this is like fresh, fresh. Yeah. You know, fresh what, I love, you know what I love about here is this just came from a drift event. Yeah. This was competing yesterday for us. Yeah. Not for you guys. It was last Saturday. But the difference is that they don't have rain, and rain makes all of this look like absolute scrap underneath. After one event, you get all muck and everything, and you never really clean all this. Before it even gets to the event, just on the trailer, it's destroyed. But here, everything stays so nice, so you can actually appreciate all the builds straight away. So, talk us through from front to back. So, obviously, Wise Fab, and we did the rack on the Wise Fab, the new kit. And I did my own sump custom, uh, and, and the powder coated, obviously, just to keep it clean. There's no leaks, but I see something, I don't know what that is. I think it's power steering. But it's the first time seeing it underneath the car right now after the event. After the event. And 
uh, it's pretty good to be honest for the yeah, first time. Yeah, it's held up pretty okay <laughs> for a first event. Exactly. If it was Josh's car, there would be all oil here, yeah. and then mm -hmm. this would have fallen off. Yeah. Uh, and ah, oh, look at this. Transmission mount. Yep. Why not? Yeah. I love this exhaust. Why not? Exactly. I love this exhaust because it's so V8 and then right at the end I just love that JDM touch at the end bringing it back around to one side. That's such an awkward custom bit to do but it's so worth <laughs> it's it. It's so worth <laughs> it for the looks. It has for the looks. I mean, do it for the looks. Exactly. <laughs> like everything, even the prop shaft, everything is just finished. I love that. Yeah, I did that too. I had to, then I just powder coated it. I do one custom here in Abu Dhabi. It's amazing. It's yeah. all so tidy. All the wiring is tidy. Oh, look at all the yeah, all rails actually protected. Yeah. Let's keep it clean. Keep it nice and clean. Like all the black is really nice. Black on the on the candy red is nice as well. Mm. It's so really nice. Just to protect because the firewall, even it's also inside. So I made a special tunnel, and then you, obviously I clean like it's closed with a foot mount uh, inside, and then this from the bottom, so it's all protect, protected. Protected the whole way along. Yeah. And then obviously our control arms are custom, my logo. I like how you say obvious. You did a custom control arm with your logo. That's yeah, so the logo's in. I couldn't find it to be honest, so I just made it. I couldn't find it, so I just made it. That's that's what I'm hearing here a lot. And this exhaust, I think it's just badass the way it comes out to the twin. Because you would think it's a 2J. Yeah. You would think it's like a 2J or an SR20. It's had the 2J and with an R154 with a turbo and everything. I was like, take this. Get it. <laughs> Sorry, JDM people who love the 2Js and the RBs, but Sultan says V8s exactly. make them make work. You, you know. I am now 100% convinced on V8s for drifting, especially because it's torque. You should. Jo Josh is already regretting an SR20, <laughs> and he's never even got a few. Massively you're regretting. <laughs> well, thank you so much for showing us around That's your new place. Pleasure. And like this car, I, I want to ask people at home. Is this the best IS200 in the world? He's not claiming it, I'm claiming it. I think this might be the most complete one. I mean, I think Ken Gushi's is very nice. Probably not as tidy as this though. So you guys let me know in the comments, is this the best one in the world? What would you do differently? They're all gonna say, I'll put a 2J in it, but come on. A V8 is so much more usable for drifting. <laughs> so let's, let's hear it in the comments. What was your favorite car you saw on the, on the episode today? How cool is Sultan's new workshop? We're gonna be calling back here in future episodes to see new builds, which we had to bleep out in this episode, uh, but we will definitely be bringing those to you very, very soon. We're just gonna spend another couple of minutes here wandering around with our jaws on the floor, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.